It's a beautiful day in the reptile room. A beautiful day in the reptile room. It's a beautiful day in the reptile room. And I've always wanted a neighbor who likes my reptiles. I haven't found one yet. Most of them are terrified of me. However, that's what we're going to kind of talk about. Not scared neighbors, but our transition of expectations. This is a really hard transition. We're going to do it anyway. Our transitions of expectations to where we actually are after seven years and what we kind of thought when we first started and then where we ended up. And the idea is I know some of you out there are probably, you know, in year 40 or eight, somewhere where we're at. Some of you are probably further along. Some of you are probably just getting started. And um, everybody's race is going to be different. I want to start this video with that. So this is not meant to be, hey, in seven years, this is where we're at. And if you're not here, you're behind. That is not what this is meant to be at all. What this is kind of meant to show is just how our expectations were early on versus what they are now and where we're going and just kind of how it's all working. So if you guys will give me a little bit of leeway, we're going to have a day in the reptile room talking about those sort of things. But hopefully that intro worked halfway well. That was our first take, believe it or not. One take. It's pretty awesome how we do that. <laughs> All right, guys. So here's the thing. We first started this seven years ago. Uh, my expectations were very, very low. You know, I decided I wanted to breed ball pythons. There's a few animals I really wanted. I started researching and looking into it. And I thought, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, I can breed ball pythons, pay for my animals, and then do it on a level that it could become my job when I'm retired, which is really still kind of our goals. But when I first started that, that goal entailed me working until I was at least 50 years old, where I could collect my retirement and collect a large enough percentage that I was only having to uh, really supplement a very small amount from reptiles. I mean, you're talking not a lot of income needed <coughs> at that point to continue on and live the life uh, that I'm accustomed to. Um, However, that obviously has changed. So we, we've, I think, exceeded the expectations that I had for myself and for our business. And we're kind of on a faster track than I anticipated originally. Uh, you know, and it all started. It all started pretty simply. I mean, it started with a couple of snakes. And then, you know, one of the first snakes, as a matter of fact, today's feed day. So we're probably going to do a little bit of a live feeding in here sometimes too. So don't hate me for that. <laughs> I just... You know, there's work to be done and shit like that. Is this the large ones, Kurt? Yep. No, this other one's the large ones, huh? Oh, I didn't tell Kurt we were going to do that. This was actually a video that was his idea. But in discussing and in showing you these animals on feed day, I know how tuned up some of these ladies are going to be. So I'll make you a gap because you don't want to come see this. Uh, so this is one of the females that truly for me, really started us on a path of being more than just, I guess, believing in ourselves. And that is here. This is Pandora. She is a pastel head exanthic. She is very hungry right now, as you can see. She's putting a weight back on, which is great. That's what we want her doing. But this was the one that really kind of pushed the envelope for me and made me believe in what I could do. Good job, girly. Uh... And what I mean by that is I knew with this animal what I could produce and I could produce the things I was really after. And then when we finally did it, you know, and we started producing things like, well, he's probably hungry too today. And I believe he is over here. Kurt's going to completely yell at me because we're completely doing this out of order. He's going to be like, son of a bitch. But uh, this is where my expectations really took off. And that is, I hate these boxes. There we go. You don't want them to escape. You're opening it up on the wrong side. Well, it's the right side now. And that is my boy over here, Zeus. You guys have all met Zeus many times. Uh, let me find where I stuck him at. Do, 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 do. You think I'd know right here. We'll see if he's hungry. He has shed too. So hopefully he is hungry. We'll give him a chance to feed in front of everybody. And this is a snake that really pushed up my expectations. This is the first snake where I'm like, man, I can really do this. It's going to let sniff you. There you go. Good. And what I just checked there just so you know is making sure that he had the head pretty good and wrapped. And if he didn't and I felt like that was going to start chewing on him, I'm not going to lie. I had to thump that thing right on camera. Uh, not what I like to do, but 
It's better than getting a snake chewed up. It's better for everybody involved, right? Good job, buddy. Get in there. But that was the one that really let me know that, hey, man, you can be successful. You can do this. And then our, honestly, our thoughts changed with the advent of social media into our business. Social media was around before we started doing this. You know, I started Facebook right away, but it was really slow growing. Uh, you know, we were going to do all this posting with my two or three snakes, you know. <laughs> but then we started the YouTube, which we also started very early. You should go back. Just go back and watch one of the first three videos I did. You know, you're going to see me in a K-State shirt only, and then I got this white shirt with a purple Olympus emblem on it, which is kind of cool. It's quite classic, but... Oh, by the way, if you can have it your way at Subway... Hey, I know that your original spokesman Subway was this, uh, you know, piece of human crap that was doing a lot of stuff I'm not even going to mention that I, you know... He, he doesn't worth breathing oxygen, but we'll take your money. Uh, and we won't even do that. We won't even embarrass you like that, Subway. Pick better spokesmen, people. Holy crap. Research your people. Anyway, that's a whole other story. But we started our social media campaign with the YouTube kind of as a joke. And as you can see, here we are. Uh, and it, well, YouTube's never paid us a lot of money. We're not technically allowed to disclose how much money we make off YouTube. But I, will be, I can tell you that it is in a range. We've never had a month off of just YouTube where anything was in four digits. I can tell you that. Um, and there's some places you can see like Social Blade. You can get kind of an idea and feel free to check it out. We only don't say it because the contract with YouTube. But uh, what it did for our ability to sell animals was mind-blowing. And, and I think, too, the first time we went to a show in Denver my expectations really changed. And Kurt, hopefully you'll talk a little bit on this and back me up because I think your reviews are going to be even different than mine. As a matter of fact, we might have to do the trade again now that I think about it. Um, you're saying no. We could just do a cut and swap it. How about that? Okay. And <laughs> what I'm saying is when I went to Denver, you know, I kind of thought, and we kind of talked on the way, hey, you know, some people might know who we are. We might get there. And we knew we had a few people off Patreon. Patreon was in his infancy then that were saying they were going to probably come. And now we thought that was really cool. We're like, hey, you know, we might have a few people who come up and know who we are. Wouldn't that be crazy just to think that somebody we've never met knows who we are from, from this YouTube thing? The thing was, it wasn't a few people. It was a good number of people. It was more people than I had any idea that I could even imagine. Uh, and then this last time in Florida, some of you guys saw me in Florida, we had people stopping us all day long and saying, hey, I watch you all the time. And that's really kind of changed my expectations and my belief in where our direction is going uh, because we've been able to reach a, a, a large number of people. And we're very fortunate in that, in this house. So every time we kind of get to a spot where I think, okay, this is where we're at, something changes. Something for the good has changed, whether it's the growth of social media or whether it is, you know, this reptile house coming to fruition, whether it's a success we've had on Patreon, no matter what it is, something good comes along and pushes it. Now, that's not to say that everything's been roses for us through the entire seven years, because it, it, it hasn't. I mean, if you followed this year, we had the two accidental uh, clown clutches that were kinked to hell. Trust me, I'm going to show you guys those babies. I actually did have to euthanize a, a good number of them, but I saved some of them so I could show that when we do the clutch update how they came out, because I think it is important. Um, it'll be like a little frozen rock, but I'll still show it to you. So there's those kind of things that have happened and we've lost babies. Uh, we, I mean, we've, we've gambled on a few things that didn't work out so well, you know, we've, we've had our taken our lumps too, but any business does. I think one thing that's helped us besides the social media is that we make a choice to focus on the positive. And even when we do stray from that, and I know I have a few times, and I focused on the negative, and you've seen videos where I focused on the negative, and it usually has been like the negatives of, you know, Facebook groups and things like that. But I'm not focusing on the negative because I'm angry. I'm focusing on the negative to bring it to light and say that in spite of all of this, all of this negativity, if you choose to be positive in this hobby and you choose to do you and you choose to do the right thing and you choose not to just let the pressures get to you about what everybody else says, you know, and you base what you're doing on what you believe and why you believe it, but you have something to back it up. It's not something you pull out your ass, you know what I mean? You're going to be fine. You're going to be successful. Uh, you know, and if you look at us, I think we've changed what we do, but we've never changed what we do because 
of blowback on social media. We've never said, oh, we do this and have people go, oh my God, you can't do that, and then changed. We haven't. Uh, we have changed because we've learned better ways to do things or found things that work better. So you, I think you have to be open to change as well. But I think that's my story on our expectations is I hoped it would be a job that could you know make just enough to make me whole after I retired. And now I'm hoping it's a job that can allow me to retire from that earlier and allow me to do just this and not only take care of me and my family, but also take care of camera guy Kurt and his family. Um, so there's more than just me to look out for now. I, I've got two people in here that I have to think about, and so does he. Like, we, we both always have to concentrate on the uh, togetherness of it and how that's going to shake out. But, and I think it can do that. Like, I, I, I've had conversations all the time, man. Just stick with it. I know we're going to get to where we want to be. So the belief is certainly there. I think it'll probably take us four or five more years, and that's okay. I've got that time. I'm willing to put in that time. I'm willing to work like a dog during that time. I'm willing to go to my day job and do 40 to 50 hours a week and then come here and do a lot more hours that I prefer not to say in case my boss watches this. It's just 20. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, there's a policy on that where I work. I'm willing to do that because this is a job that I love. And I love every part of it. I love this part. I, I truly do love turning on the camera and getting to speak through it and send my message across and hopefully be positive about it and hopefully show that it can be done and it can be done in you know your own way and you can do it with your own flair and you can be yourself and let your goofiness fly and not worry about it. I mean, here I am, an overweight fat guy on camera, smiling and confident. And even though a thousand people are like, you can look like this, I just don't care. I really don't. But it takes that level of confidence too in yourself to do this. That doesn't mean you believe you're the greatest thing in the world. I'm far from that. Uh, but you got to be at least comfortable in your own skin would be the best way to put that. So, man, that's where it's at. It's just, it has exceeded everything I ever imagined, but now I expect it to continue to exceed it and we will push for that. So let me flip this around and How we're if I just do my part on Patreon. Your part on Patreon? Yeah. So if people want to check that out. Why is that, Kurt? Why do you want to do your part just on Patreon? I don't know. Is that so you can talk to a smaller audience? I don't know. All right, we'll do Kurt's part on Patreon. If you're members, check it out. Uh, if you're not a member, become one. Even if you just become one for a month, see that video. Because I think his is going to be really awesome. And the reason I think that is I think, you know, when I started, like I said, my view was I thought it could be that supplemental part. I think his beginning is going to be, I thought Matt was a dumbass. Like, that's what I've always kind of thought his initial impression was. So I'm curious to hear it because I've never heard that. So make sure and go check that because I think Kurt's view is going to be vastly different than mine. And, uh, you know, part of this message comes from, too, if you've watched our videos in order, and I'm going to tell you something about doing this because it's kind of funny how this works. Uh, yeah, we just went through something really difficult. And as you're seeing this, you're seeing the difficult thing and then you're seeing this message of positivity, okay? But let me tell you what really happened. So you understand the message of positivity and that I really mean it and I'm really sincere in it. We started filming this video and then going through things while we were filming it. Uh, that was when I found, you know, that we'd lost chaos, which is my ultimate goal. I have no idea why that happened. None. Everything else was fine. Uh, but babies, sometimes babies just aren't going to make it. You know, it, it had been eaten, it pooped, it was going into its second shed, it like a slightly rough shed, that was it. It was possible maybe it was trying to run through the water dish to get some skin off and just breathe in at the wrong time. That can happen to a baby. Could have been a lot of things. But a loss like that, when I first started, would have uh, crushed me. Like when I lost my first clutch, it crushed me. And to tell you that that loss doesn't hurt. And kick me right in the balls. And you're going to see, because as soon as I'm done here, you know, when we filmed the video you just saw, or the previous week. Um, and I wanted to film it. Like I told Kurt when I saw it, let's film a video about that. I want to do it now, because I'm feeling it now. But, even through that, e even through that kick in the balls, you know, and that's a big kick for me. You know what I mean? And it's not the amount of value we lost or anything like that. It's, the goal animal that we lost. Uh, 
just sucks. So even through that, though, I'm going to tell you I still believe in what I'm doing. And I still believe in the success of what I'm doing. Uh, and that's why we share everything. And it's still there. So while that hurt, it doesn't change my outlook a bit for where I'm at. I didn't keep that snake because of it could do this or this. Well, that's all been discussed already. I kept it because of the love of it. But you have to take those negative hits and you have to focus on what's going well, especially if you're growing and moving forward, which is what we do. So we're going to continue to do that. And that message of positivity, guys, is real. Because I can tell you, this room's going to fill. We're going to keep going. And it doesn't matter what happens within reason. I mean, there are things, obviously, I can't control. But uh, <coughs> within reason, whatever happens, we're going to go on. And the reason we're going to do that, guys, is because no matter what goes wrong, it's always going to be a beautiful day in this neighborhood and a beautiful day in this reptile room. And I hope that each and every one of you and a lot more continue to come with us and continue to make this journey as we walk through this, uh, this life and this place and this path. I want to take you all with us on all the plans that we have. And the plans actually outgo this room. They outgo this state. They outgo this country long term with some of the things we want to do. I don't know how many of them will achieve, but we're going to try. Setbacks happen, but you got to keep moving forward. So keep being my neighbor.